Uh, Wallaby strives to diversify its GDP away from oil, and one of the key sectors and enablers to do that is the tourism sector, and its contributions will be direct and indirect. And uh, you know, Abu Dhabi, uh, Abu Dhabi presents itself as a family-friendly leisure destination for all, and we do have you know the beaches, the malls, the the sites, the amusement parks. But what distinguishes us is our cultural offering. These sites, these forts we have, these these uh, historic sites, the mega museums, the other museums in Al Ain. Uh, these gives us, these give us a different angle and attract also a different kind of a segment, but also extend the day spent by your average tourist. Uh, but it's not all about the footfall. I mean, when you look at the Louvre Abu Dhabi Museum, and uh, you know we're not going to discuss the cost, but that investment goes beyond uh, Why tourism. Why don't you discuss the cost? Why is that <laughs> always so tough to get out of you guys? Because, because you can never put a price on cultural dialogue, on cultural understanding. Does that mean then that the government here in Abu Dhabi and the UAE generally will pay whatever it takes to implement this kind of of reform and this kind of dialogue? No, certainly not. We have, we have clear-cut strategies, we have clear-cut plans, and they run at a very cost-efficient manner, and we are able to measure the outcome of all of our efforts. I think the, 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 the trick is for the next era is to engage the private sector or the third sector. Uh, cultural philanthropy uh, benefactors play a great role in funding uh, the culture and arts strategies in the West. When you look at the last several months in particular, there's been an increase in footfall, there's been increased hotel occupancy. But when you look at even the last several weeks, over the Easter weekend, for example, prices in Dubai three to five times mm -hmm. higher. Are you trying to increase the tourism and the footfall and the hotel occupancy at the expense so, so of prices? As part of our tourism strategy, we would like to, uh, you know, achieve a, a, a level of around eight and a half million visitors by 2021, and that could only be attained through a two-pronged strategy. Uh, You're willing to cut prices? Uh, no, I did not say that. <laughs> uh, the first, of course, the first uh, arm of that strategy is our marketing promotion efforts and as key source markets. Uh, last year, we grew year on year, we grew around 10% in the number of hotel guests. Uh, and, and we believe that we'll even see greater growth this year. We try to uh, increase the demand at very significant levels to ensure that the demand can sustain uh, good uh, returns for investors. At the end of the day, you know, my job is to as well attract investment to the uh, tourism sector, be it the hotel subsector or any other subsector of the tourism sector. And that could only be done by generating healthy returns for my investors today. Uh, there have been drops uh, in returns, uh, but I do believe that they are temporary across the Emirates. We see a lot of growth from China, from India, from Saudi Arabia, and, uh, and we expect to continue to see that phenomenal, uh, exceptional growth from these markets. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.